Brother Anthony Roberts, greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you've been able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, it is our prayer that you will be built up on, on your most holy faith as you view the Word of God. Shall we pray? Blessed be God, our God, who gave for us His well-beloved Son. And, O oh God, we give you thanks for your mercy and your love, your grace towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you for your love, in that when we were in the mire, when we were dead in trespasses and in sin, thou hast rescued us, thou hast delivered us. And we thank you for this day which thou hast made. We could rejoice and be glad in it, we give you thanks, O oh God, for using us in this ministry to declare thy word, to declare the gospel which still remains the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. We look to you, Lord, for your leading, your guidance by thy Holy Spirit, and that thy word will saturate in the hearts of all those who hear it, and that there will be a real change, that there will be a desire to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that many will rejoice in sins forgiven and iniquities pardoned. And we give you thanks, O Lord. We praise your name. We magnify your name. Glory and honor be to thee through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. We read from the second book of Corinthians, second Corinthians and chapter 5. And we read one verse there, verse 17. One, Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. It reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he quoted there in context of the fact that there were many who were displaying themselves as the ministers of God and they were not. There were many who displayed an outward appearance. Yet they tried to criticize Paul. They tried to diminish his apostleship. They tried to instill in the minds of the Corinthians, the Corinthian believers, that Paul was not real. He was not called of God. But Paul was called, as he was called Saul of Tarsus, on his way to Damascus to bring those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ bound to Jerusalem. He was one who, as he himself declared, he was injurious, a blasphemer, a persecutor. He was zealous of his religion. And the Apostle Paul, he persecuted those who called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that time, he was struck down on the Damascus Road and he was called for a purpose. God chose him. He was a chosen vessel unto the Lord to be used to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. And while Paul started the church at Corinth, there were those who infiltrated to create a division, to create diversion, 
They wanted to turn the minds of the believers away from Paul unto themselves. These were false teachers. False teachers. They presented an outward show. They were eloquent. They were zealous. But they were not of God. They preached a gospel, not the gospel. They drew attention to themselves. And Paul was here admonish admonishing the saints not to look at their outward appearance. These men, they had an outward show. They were very zealous in what they were doing. But they were false apostles. And we will notice in, in chapter 11, in the same second book of Corinthians, and chapter 11, and as we look at verse 13 there, Paul was further admonishing the, the saints there to be careful. And hear what he says. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So Paul did not want them to judge by outward appearance. Don't look at them and be carried away by the eloquence. They were very good orators. They were deceitful workers. And he did not want the saints there to be deceived. They did not have sincerity of heart. They did not have integrity and honesty or any inward reality, but just an outward show. Men look at the outward appearance and judge. God looks on the heart. God is the one who sees the inner man and knows the man. And God who sees the heart of men knows what man is like. And Paul wanted these saints not to judge by outward appearance, but now being a new creature, a new creation, being born of the Spirit, they'll judge men differently. In the book of... Samuel, 1 Samuel and chapter 16. 1 Samuel and chapter 16. There we see that Samuel was called by the Lord to go to the house of Jesse. And there he will anoint one king, one who is chosen by him. Now Saul was king at that time. And Saul disobeyed the command of the Lord. We read of this in 1 Samuel and chapter 15. He disobeyed the command that was given to him by the Lord. He was, dis he was told to destroy Amalek. To destroy everything. But what? He saved the king. And the best of the animals... To offer sacrifice unto God. And he was told to obey is better than sacrifice. However, in his disobedience to God, and he was chosen by the people, not by God. God told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse, and there he will see one who he should anoint as king. 
Now when Samuel got to the house, when he got there, he saw a man of very good stature. He was a man of good looks. He looked good, well built. And he was taken away by this and he said, the Lord's anointed is before him. The Lord's anointed is before him. This is in verse 6. We read, And it came to pass when they were come, and he looked at Eliab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But we read, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on his height, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looked, looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Man looked at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. <coughs> However, eventually, we see that when he sent for David, who was in the field, and David came, he said, in verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. And he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, a goodly to look to and the goodly to look to and the Lord said arise anoint him for this is he you see Samuel looked at Eliab the man of good stature his countenance he had a very good countenance his height and well built and he said surely the Lord's anointed is before him but he was told that he should not look on the outward appearance. This is how man look on the outward appearance. And so many have been deceived by this. Looking at the outward appearance. Many people have been deceived in so many different ways of life. People have been deceived by someone who looks so well dressed. Look at someone who is honest, someone beautiful. And so many regret that they look at the outward appearance and turn a blind eye to the heart. But my friends, this was told to the Corinthians that they should not look at the outward appearance. This is what Paul was telling them. Therefore he concluded, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What he was telling them is this, that they are looking at the outward appearance of these men who display themselves as being ministers of God. And they were ministers of Satan. Don't judge men by their looks. But from no one, judge men by their actions, by their heart. You see, all evil things proceeds from the heart, from the thoughts of men. The thoughts are put into action. So he was telling them, now you judge by their actions. But the only way you can really judge men and by their actions very good is that you yourselves must be changed. They must be looking at a spiritual point of view. So he said, 
any man be in Christ. Notice that. Any man. Any man. Be in Christ. So for someone to be in Christ, it is not a selective few. Anyone, meaning you, could be in Christ. You can have the change. Is a new creation. Notice in Christ. Not in religion. Not in good works. But in Christ is a new creation. The Apostle Paul added in that even though he has known Christ in the flesh, to have an intimate relationship with him is something else. To really know him. The different the difference and the change comes from within. And this is what the Lord Jesus Christ was telling Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and verse 3. He told Nicodemus, Most assuredly, I say unto you, ye must be born again. You must be born again. Of course, Nicodemus was confused, for he was well learned of the natural birth. He knew what it is to be born from his mother's womb. But the Lord Jesus Christ was telling Nicodemus, he must be born again. Furthermore, he said, that that which is born of the flesh, in John chapter 3 and verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. In other words, there must be an inward change. And only the Lord Jesus Christ himself can create that change. You must be born again. Have the new birth. And my friends, we beg of you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ to experience that new birth, that change. I've heard many sang, there's a great change since I was born. Moreover, some sing, the things I used to do, I'll do them no more. The things I used to say, I'll go there no more, etc. Because a great change has been wrought by the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who can make one. The, man, the one, the only one who can change your desire. Your outlook, where you look to, to whom you look. You have no more desire for this earthly thing, but you have a desire for heavenly things. You can understand his word. You can understand his mind and his will. For the natural man cannot understand the things of God. They are like foolishness to him. You see things in a natural perspective. But Paul wanted them to see things in the spiritual light. Therefore, he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now they can judge things differently. Judge things spiritually. Look for the spiritual aspect in these teachers, whether they will know whether they are teaching the things that are of God or the things that are false, whether they are real or they are counterfeit. And you cannot know the counterfeit unless you know the real thing. So he wanted them to cling to the gospel. 
remain in the gospel. That they should live by the gospel of Christ. That they should look to Christ, not to man. Because these men, they had a very good display. And my friends, maybe you have been deceived. You trust in a man. You follow a man. You believe in a man what he says. But we want you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in his word. Walk with him. Have an intimate relationship with him. So that he can speak to you. So that he can guide you. He can lead you into all truth. When the Lord Jesus Christ was leaving his disciples. He said I will send the comforter. That is the Holy Spirit. Who shall guide you. Who shall lead you. Who shall teach you all things. And the only way you can be taught. By the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Is to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Is to be made a new creation. Is to be born again. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ told Nicodemus. He was a teacher. Nicodemus he was a ruler. And Nicodemus knew full well. That the Lord Jesus Christ must come from God. Because he knew the teachings that the Lord Jesus Christ was presenting. And he said, No man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. He knew full well that he was a teacher sent from God. Nicodemus recognized this. But the Lord Jesus Christ straightway told him, Ye must be born again. You must be born again. Because we see that Nicodemus was confused when the Lord Jesus Christ told him this. He was thinking of the natural birth. He couldn't understand the spiritual thing, that it was a spiritual birth. This was not conceived in his mind because he was of the flesh. Therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ told him that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I say unto you ye must be born again and my dear friends perhaps this new year you have made resolutions you want to create a change in your life you want a change in your outlook, perhaps in your doings. And that real change can only come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Any man be in Christ is a new creature. Perhaps you are displeased with the way you are going, the life that you are living, and you are trying your best to change. But your best is not enough. Your own effort will fail. You have no strength of your own. You have not the power to overcome sin. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the one who can create that change in you. He can deliver you from the penalty and the power of sin so that sin will have no more dominion over you you'll be able to overcome sin and that new life will be created in you by Christ Jesus you will have the power to live according to him you can live a spiritual life you can have a spiritual outlook of things you will be able to see things differently, to, to ha have an eye of discernment. And this is what Paul was telling these Corinthian believers. No more are you to judge by the flesh, by physical appearance. 
So don't be carried away by these men who will display themselves and as ministers of the gospel. And yet they are ministers of Satan. But look at things in the spiritual sense. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. All things are passed away. And perhaps you want the old things to pass away. You want to overcome sin. You want to do the works of righteousness. You want to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to go to heaven. You want to have a hope. You want to have joy. You want to have peace with God. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him as your savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You'll be made a new creature and all things will be passed away and all things become new. You'll be born of the Spirit. And it is our desire that you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, that you turn to him, that you believe in him. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can create that real change in your heart for this new year and change your outlook. Change your doings. Why not trust him as your savior. And do so now. For God's time is now. Our Father and our God. We give you thanks and praise. And we pray for all those. Who have viewed. And are viewing this program. Who have listened to thy word. And we pray O oh God. That they will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that they will be born again and be made a new creature. So we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times.